Check these balls out. Got to be careful here. I don't want to go over the edge. There is a lot of water coming over these balls. here in the Kimberley, right up the top of Western Australia. I'm on the King Edward River. We've driven all the way up the Columbaroo Road to the start of the Mitchell Plateau. We're gonna be exploring some rock art over the next couple of days. This part of Australia is untouched, pristine, spectacular. Pretty hard to get to, but worth the drive. The Kimberley sits right up the top of Western Australia and at over 400,000 square kilometers, this place is truly wild. Look at this little fella. Magnificent green tree frog. Endemic species to the Kimberley. And he's huge, beautiful yellow patterning all over his body. And that big bulbous head. He's up here in the stone country, up in the Kimberley. I'm gonna leave him be. Beautiful. Check this fella out. Freshwater crocodile. This guy's pretty big. He's sheltering up here at the rock crevice. He's got his mouth open there, he's hissing. He's not happy I'm here. I might leave him alone. I'm here at Little Merton Falls, up in the Kimberley, on the way to the Mitchell Plateau. Just stumbled across this rock art under the waterfalls. This style is over 30,000 years old. The people that painted this lived on the planet 30,000 years ago. The type of ochre, it's a hematite, and it binds into the rock. It actually rusts six millimeters into the rock. So it's part of the rock. As long as the rock's there, the painting's there. It's an incredible time scale, 30,000 years. Here you've got handprints, snakes painted, wallabies. This here's a Tasmanian tiger. These guys have been stinked on the mainland of Australia for at least 3,000 years. And this style depicted puts this at possibly 30,000 years old. Over here, you've got a more recent style. Early Wanjita, and then the much, much older, irregular infill of this wallaby in the background. People have been living here consistently for over 50,000 years, and that life's recorded in the rock art. Incredible. Check out these catacombs. Wow. There's got to be something interesting in here. Snake! Look at this guy. So he's a northern brown tree snake. See those brilliant orange bands? Mm -hmm. These are one of Australia's few colubrid snakes. Colubrids are rear fanged, tiny little fangs at the back. So if he was to bite you, really has to chew in the venom. He eats birds. He can eat bird eggs, all sorts of things. These have actually been introduced. Unfortunately, Australia introduced them to Guam and they've eaten out all of the birds in Guam. In Australia, our birds have evolved with this snake, but one of our very few colubrid snakes. Mildly venomous to humans. A, a one this size, chewing in the venom, could certainly have a, an impact, but they're stunning snakes. One of my favorite snakes. Check this spot out. Merton Falls in the Kimberley up the Mitchell Plateau. Absolutely spectacular. Look at this. Got a skink here, trying to make a feed of a goliath or Darwin stick insect. These stick insects are the largest stick insects in the world by length. And this guy, I reckon he's biting off more than he can chew. 
only a small stick insect for its species. They get a lot bigger than this. In fact, almost double this size, but even so, I reckon this skink's got a, a tough time ahead of him. Oh. oh, look at that. Incredible. Gutsy fella. Might leave him with his feed. Here we go. This is what I'm after. What I've been looking for. These are called tasseled figures, or guion figures, by the local Aboriginal people. These were painted over 17,000 years ago, before the last ice age. Look at the intricate detail of the tassels on the arms and the hips, the headdresses. This is the best example of guion or Bradshaw art I've ever found. Sensational. Behind me are the Mitchell Falls. I'm way up in the northern Kimberley here. Long way from anywhere. Heck of a trek to get up here and a big walk in, but it is worth it. This is absolutely spectacular. These waterfalls carve through this gorge. This rock here is 1.8 billion years old. Aboriginal people have been in this area for over 50,000 years. Those sort of numbers make your head spin. What a spectacular part of the world. Nowhere else like it. made the hike in, I think we might get a helicopter out. Should be a good view. Crossing the stunning Pentecost River, back on the Gibb River Road, we're on our way to Elquestro, a million acre cattle property in the eastern Kimberley. The sun sets on another perfect Kimberley day. I'm up here at Brunco's Lookout at Elquestro. I've travelled a lot of the world and I've seen a lot of views, but I reckon this one's got to be up there. Got the Coburn Ranges in the background, the Pentecost River below. A lot of country in between. Awesome. Truly awesome. Gotta love the Kimberley. Just spotted this southern bullbook. This guy's Australia's smallest owl. One of the cutest fellas in the bush. Check this guy out. Tawny frog mouth. They look a bit like an owl, but in fact they're not an owl. They are a nocturnal predatory bird. Fantastic nocturnal vision and brilliant camouflage. During the day they'll roost up in a tree, stick their neck out, look exactly like a branch. Check out that orange eye. Beautiful birds. Leave this fella alone. Oh wow. This is Gracile's velvet gecko, Odura gracilis. It's an endemic species to the Kimberleys, only found in this part of Australia. Wow, what a stoke. Cutie. I'm here at the Bungle Bungles. 
down at Pernalulu National Park, right on the edge of the Tanami Desert. The sandstone itself that forms the Bungle Bungles eroded down from huge, gigantic, ancient mountains, bigger than the Himalayas, down inland basins, and dumped all this sediment here in what's now Pernalulu National Park, 360 million years ago. Since then, the process of erosion from the southeast, wind off the Tanami Desert, sand and rain, has eroded this sandstone escarpment formation in the southeast of the park here into these incredible beehive domes. You've got two different layers of sediments here that give that beehive two-tone colour effect. The black is cyanobacteria, ancient living life form, one of the oldest living life forms on the planet. The red is oxidisation from iron content in the rock, like rust. Nowhere else to compare this place to, it's a pretty unique part of Australia, pretty unique part of the world. Absolutely stunning. There's several walks down here in the Bungle Bungles. We're heading into Cathedral Gorge. The walk takes you through Steep Wall Gorge into a massive expanse of natural amphitheatre at the end. Now, you're going to have to take my word for it because I'm not much of a singer. But if you can sing, this is where you want to come and test the chords. The acoustics here are out of this world. This is a very special place. Just hiked into Mini Palms Gorge on the northern side of the Bungle Bungles. This northern side has more of a conglomerate. You've got larger stones trapped in the sedimentary sandstone. And these skinny chasms and gorges on the northern side completely different than the rest of the bungles. The colours here are beyond belief. The oranges, the reds, the whites. Very pretty. As the sun sets over the Osman Ranges, there's no better place to be than up on one of these ridges looking at the western face of the Bungle Bungles. The burnt oranges that reflect off the rock looks like the whole place is on fire. Spectacular colours. To get a true sense of the complete grandeur of Pernalulu National Park, there's really only one way to do it. That's getting up in the air. Nothing better than a chopper. No way. 